Welcome back to another LP Gallery tutorial. Today, we're going to continue our Christmas series. We're going to create some nice Christmas greens. We're going to turn them into little door swags and wreaths. These will be all done very simply. Now, they look complicated, and if you've been following our tutorials, you know that we take complicated looking things and when we make them very easy. How do you do this? Well, you start out with a simple stem. You create a stem here, you create the pine needles, you group it, you overlap them, you create the central stem, you create the side branches, then you group that, and then you add a drop shadow to give a little body, and from this stem, you create all these things. So if you've been following our tutorials, you know that we start off with create once, and duplicate is our kind of theme, our motto, and from that, you can create all these things. And then we're gonna add a little variation, we'll make some dark greens and some light greens, to make it look a little more realistic. I'm going to draw out the stem first, and I'm gonna use the stem as a basis for all the pine needles. Now you're gonna think that I'm going to draw a vertical stem, but I'm not, I'm gonna actually draw a horizontal one. I'm gonna draw a horizontal rectangle because I'll have my rotation handle at the top. Because I'm zoomed in very close, there will not be a rotation handle in something this small. So I'm gonna show you that. So if I draw, a vertical rectangle to represent the stem, you'll see I don't have a rotation handle. This object is too small for PowerPoint to display the rotation handle. I would have to widen it to actually see it, which will be problematic for doing all these pine needles. So what you actually have to do in a case like this is you have to draw it horizontally and then you can rotate it. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to grab my rectangle too, and I'm going to draw it horizontally. Now that I have it horizontally, there's my shape handle. Remember, the shape handle is always at the top. So now I'm free to rotate this at any angle I want. The next thing to do, of course, is to give it a color. So I'm going to go from a dark brown to a light brown. So I'm going to just apply a gradient. I'm going to take a gradient. You get the default gradient. I only need two colors, so I'll remove these. Definitely don't need an outline, so I'll get rid of that too. So I want a brown to a dark brown. Now the thing is, I am going to rotate this. So I'll probably rotate it now so I can tell which side the light to dark brown is going to go. So you can see by what we have here, the dark is here and the light is here, and I need the dark to be at the bottom going up. So I'm going to take this to zero, and we have this. So we have the dark at the top, light at the bottom. I can rotate it, or I can just switch the stops, which I think I'll do. I'll just switch the stops, and we have it this way. So now we have the dark at the bottom, light at the top. Okay, so now all I have to do is find our color. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to go to more color. I'm going to just use a default color. I'll take this one. And what I'm going to do is just make it a little bit darker. Like that. So, okay. I'm going to take this top. I'm going to use the same color. And just make that one a little bit lighter. So, I'm going to take that one. I'm going to go to custom. And I'll just make it a little lighter. Something like that. And there we have our stem. I'm going to bring the darkness up just a little bit. So I'm going to take this and just drag a little more like that. Okay, so anyways, there's a stem. So now that is going to be the basis for all the pine needles. Now to create the pine needles, I'm just going to duplicate this. And I'm going to give it a solid green. There's no value of putting gradients in these pine needles because they're going to end up being so small you're not going to see it. And you just add to the redraw. So it'll just slow all the redrawing down, so it's better just to leave it a solid color. So I'm going to go my solid color. I'm going to go here. I'm going to just choose a dark green, and that's good enough. So now the next step, of course, is to create a whole bunch of these and just make them slightly different sizes. And not, try not to make a pattern because we don't want to make it too obvious. So you can see like something like this. It's uh, got some spaces here, so it's not quite like this one. So I could duplicate one side and just flip it, but I think I'm going to make both sides differently just so they don't look so obvious. Okay, so I'm going to do this very quickly and uh, we'll move on to the next step. The next step, of course, is to group this all together. Okay, so now I'm going to make this very small. I'm now going to put them into branches, and from the branches, I'm going to group them and apply a drop shadow. We're trying to make it look semi-realistic, but we don't want an obvious pattern. So I'm going to take one of these. So I don't want too obvious a pattern, so I'm going to rotate this, and I'm going to flip that one. 
So we have a slight difference between them. So as we start putting them together, they're not going to be such an obvious pattern. So all I have to do now is just um, overlap them. So I just take them, overlap them like this, and you get something like that. And we just keep doing that. Okay, now we're going to try to create the side branches. So we just grab these, and we do exactly that. We just rotate them and give ourselves some side branches. Okay, so now we've got our nice little side branches. We can now group this and apply a nice little drop shadow to it. So I'm going to select them. I'm going to group them. And now apply a nice little drop shadow to them. So I'm going to go to my special effects here. I want to go shadow. I'm going to just apply maybe just a down shadow, something very simple. Maybe just something like this. And we have a down shadow. Now, we have too much of a shadow here. So I'm going to take my point size down. And I'm going to take my distance down. Something like that. I want just a little shadow. It gives it a little bit of depth, but it's not that strong. Okay, so now we have that. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to rotate it. So once again, I'm going to take one of these, and I'm also going to flip that. So they're not such an even pattern again. And you get something like this. Typically of a door swag, for example, it kind of looks like a triangular shape. But you can also do uh, wreaths, and you can also do crescent shapes of these. So we'll just do a simple uh, triangular one. So we've got something like that. We've got something like this. Now the idea is to make it look like all the branches are coming together to a point. So we're going to rotate. And so... Something like this. We're going to take that one. We're going to rotate that. So the idea is that they're on longer, slightly longer branches, and they're being rotated to a point, just like it would be in a real life. Okay, so we just, uh, I can take this one and uh, rotate that. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm just trying to make it look like a triangular shape of some type. Like that. Take that one, put it more in the middle. And we have something that kind of looks like this. Okay, so you got a triangular shape. Now how thick you want to make this is entirely up to you. You can keep adding, keep adding, and keep adding. So if I want to make this be a lot bigger, I'll just add another one. And it just keeps going. And we get something that looks like that. So it looks kind of triangular shaped, which is what we want. It doesn't have to be perfectly triangular shaped, but we want it to look kind of natural. Okay, so we got something like that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to group it. Now you can, of course, overlap them a lot thicker like I have here. But I'm going to show you another way to do that. Okay, so let's see what it looks like on the door. It doesn't look too bad at all. Okay. Now what we can do now, now that the group together, is add a drop shadow to the whole thing. So now we're going to go back here. We'll add a drop shadow, and we get a, a drop shadow that gives a little more depth. Okay, so there's a drop shadow to apply to the whole thing. So what I like to do is I like to mix my colors dark and light, like you see here. I think that looks more natural. Now to do that, I'm not going to bother making another one that's dark. What I'm going to do is just copy and paste that as a PNG file. And then with a PNG file, I'll have the picture tools, and I'm going to just adjust that darker. Keep in mind, again, that when you're creating a lot of teeny little objects, and these branches are made up tiny, tiny objects, but there's a lot of them, and you've added special effects like drop shadows, depending on your computer, how much memory you have, just even moving these can be time-consuming because your computer kind of stutters. So if you create things to the size you actually need them, an alternative way is to copy and paste them as PNG files. PNG files are very small files. You can also paste them as Windows Meta files. The advantage of a Windows Meta file is that, of course, you can scale it to any size you want and it will retain its quality. But keep in mind that Windows Meta files make much larger files. Okay? They, they're easy to move, but they do increase the file size of your whole PowerPoint file. So I'm going to just create this as a PNG file. So I'm going to copy it and I'm going to go to my home. And I'm going to go paste, space special, just as a PNG. 
and there's my PNG. Now what I'm going to do with this one is I'm actually going to make it a little bit smaller. And I'm going to actually flip it. I don't want it to be exactly in the same position, so I'm going to flip it horizontally so it's not quite the same. And I'm going to make that a little bit darker. So I'm going to go my format, my corrections, and let's see. Maybe I'll make it just a shade bit darker like that. And we just get a little bit of darkness to it, and it adds a little bit of variety. Now, how dark I want to make this, entirely up to me. If I want that to be a little darker, I might go back and just take one more step darker. So you get it pretty dark. So you got something like this, and you have a variety of dark and light branches, and that actually tends to make it look a little more realistic. So I've combined a PNG and the PowerPoint vector file together to create that, and I do that a lot. So again, instead of having to create a dark branch like this, again, with all these tiny little pieces that may slow my computer down when I'm moving around, I just copy and paste as a PNG. Now keep in mind, PNGs are not scalable. If you scale a PNG file, it will not look very good. It'll get kind of fuzzy. So if you want to copy and paste as a PNG, you want it to be the size you actually need it. Okay, the next thing to do, of course, is to create our round wreath. Now, just to save time, I already have my circle drawn because we need that as the background so we can build the branches on it. And I've removed the fill and I've made the outline a nice green. And I do that because sometimes when I group all these things together to use them, I forget to remove the little outline. So if the outline is green and you forget to remove it when you group it, you're probably not going to notice it. And this will follow the same pattern. So we're going to overlap the branches. We're only going to have to do half of it. We're going to group it, flip it, and you have the other half. Okay, so let's get started. I have my branches reversed here, but it doesn't really matter on the wreath. You're not going to really notice it that much if you have just one type of branch going all the way around. Okay, so I'm going to take that, and we start at the top. Now, again, the idea is to make it look like it's actually being wrapped around the wreath. So you want to make it kind of look realistic. So something like this. Okay, so we're kind of looking for the stems to be kind of on the circle there. So I'm going to take that one and I'm going to rotate it. So you kind of get the idea what I'm doing. I am rotating, overlapping, and we just continue that way. Now the real important part is to make sure that you overlap more than half. So I want to be, make sure that I go over half like this. So I've overlapped the circle by a little more than a half, something like this. Now all I have to do is group that. Make sure you got the, all the pieces. I'm going to right click. I'm going to group. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to flip it. Now I'm going to flip it both ways, both vertically and horizontally. So I'm going to flip vertically and I'm going to flip horizontally. So I get the complete reverse. That way when you put it together, it should look a little more natural, kind of like this. Okay, so we have kind of like a nice little round wreath. Okay, the next step, of course, is to create the PNG format. So I'm going to create the PNG, and it's going to go in the middle here, and it'll be a little smaller. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to take this. I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to paste it as a PNG. And as always, I'm going to make this just a little bit smaller. And I'm going to make it a little bit darker. And I have something like that. And once again, I think what I'll do is I'll flip this. I'll maybe flip it horizontally. But I could flip it vertically. So once again, it looks fairly natural, like a round wreath. Now, I, I can also take this, the PNG, one more time. And what I'm going to do is maybe make that a little bit smaller. You don't have to, but it, it's going to make it a little more bushier. I'm going to put it down here in the center so it looks a little more bushier. And once again, I'm going to flip this. I'll flip that one maybe both vertically and horizontally. So get something like that. And what I'm going to do with that one is maybe I'll make it a little lighter. And then we get something like that. So you can see we got a very large wreath there with dark and light branches, and it looks very, very realistic. The last thing to do, of course, is to put your nice little bow in there. So you can grab your bow, and you can drop it on there. Now, how big the bow is will reflect how big the wreath is. That could be 
a very large wreath, so the bow is small, looks very large wreath, or if you made the bow much larger, it could be a very small wreath. So depending on how big or small you make the bow, it will reflect the size of the wreath. So we've created a door swag that's triangular shape, and now we have a nice round wreath shape. And in all cases, they look very natural. They look very realistic, which is, of course, our goal. And they all start with one little branch, right? We make it smaller, we group them into a bigger branch, and we put a drop shadow on it, and then we put them into these shapes. And like I've done here, you can mix them up with PNGs and the actual vector so that the PNGs can be darker, and you can mix and match your dark and light blends like this. Just keep in mind again that the PNGs cannot be scaled. So if you're going to do this with the PNG, then you should keep it at the size you need it. If you're considering scaling it, then I would suggest a Windows Metafile because if you paste it as a Windows Metafile, it is scalable. Just remember, you do increase your PowerPoint file size. We're going to continue with our Christmas theme. We have more things to show you. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, continue to watch our other ones. So thank you for watching, and we hope to catch you on our next video.